Hi, I'm Peter Steinberg from the Sydney Institute of Marine Science and the University of New South Wales in Sydney. And today I want to talk to you about urban marine ecology and sustainability. So when most people think about marine conservation or sustainability, their vision tends to be of a mid-Pacific island, like the one shown here of Palau. Such places are indeed incredibly important, and they're often home to unique biodiversity. But where do most people actually experience the marine or estuarine environment? So today, 54% of the world's population lives in urban areas, and that will be 66% by 2050. Sydney, the largest city in Australia, contains fully 20% of the total population of Australia. Auckland, where we are now, has over 30% of the population of New Zealand. In addition, both of these cities are coastal, and this reflects another global trend. People increasingly live on the coast. So nearly half of the world's population lives within 150 kilometers of the coast. In Australia, that number is almost 90%. So we live in an increasingly urban and coastal planet. And so most people encounter the marine environment not in a mid-Pacific atoll, but in their backyard, in cities. To understand that, all one has to do is go to any city beach on a hot summer's day. So how then do we manage urban marine systems, coast, estuaries, and harbors, and do that for the benefit of those city dwellers, our blue economy, and the marine environment? So greening of urban marine spaces and infrastructure lags behind that of similar approaches to the land component of cities. In the past decade, there's been a worldwide movement to make cities greener. They're investing in green spaces such as parks and community gardens, smart infrastructure, sustainable transport networks, and developing eco-buildings that combine the natural environment with that built infrastructure. So an entire eco-city is in fact now under construction near Tianjin in northeastern China. But what about the water component of cities? So coastal and estuarine ecosystems are incredibly valuable assets to the cities that surround them. They provide a source of food, transport, recreation, really expensive real estate, and a suite of less easily determined but equally valuable properties known as ecosystem services, which drive many of the other benefits. But those multiple uses also mean multiple challenges. And urbanization of city waterways does indeed lead to a host of challenges. Critical among these are pollution, particularly contaminated or diminished water and sediment quality in those urban waterways. It's happening worldwide. Fish kills, oil spills, excess nutrients resulting in algal blooms. For example, the one that shut down the Olympic sailing event in 2008 in Qingdao, China. Building in the sea also dramatically changes the habitat. So it's obvious how much of the physical environment of cities on land is no longer natural. All you have to do is look at the skyline of Manhattan. But because so much of the marine built environment is in fact underwater, most of us don't realize the extent of it. We build piers, cooling systems, sea wells, jetties, and of course buildings into our urban marine waterways. In Singapore, over 80% of their coast is in fact covered with built structures. Urban waterways are also classic examples of multiple uses. So they're sites for boating, transport, industry, housing, resource extraction like fishing. And this means multiple challenges for these urban marine spaces. How do we manage these often conflicting uses and demands? So finally, cities are also not immune to the impact of wider effects such as global environmental change. Because of the density of residents, the intensity of energy use, and the sheer multiplicity of activities in urban marine waterways, they're among the most susceptible to the effects of, for example, sea level rise. So, what do we do? Well, first we need to know what is out there. We can't manage something unless we know what it is. So this means both knowing what the physical structure of the environment looks like, the distribution of contaminants, the functioning of ecosystems, and the distribution and intensity of human activities in those waterways. So they're now fantastic high-tech tools for mapping underwater urban environments. These range from sophisticated sonar to underwater programmable robots which scoot around the bottom taking high-resolution pictures every second. It's actually remarkable how little we know about many of our urban waterways. For example, we've recently shown that there are more than 570 species of fish in Sydney Harbor. That's more than on the entire coast of the United Kingdom. 
Second, we need to clean up the water and the sediments. The urban marine environment is unfortunately very good at capturing inputs from our uses of waterways, both past and present. The good news is that restoration or remediation is possible. So when I moved to Sydney in the 1980s, coastal beaches there were closed to swimming for up to 30% of each summer due to the discharge of pollution directly onshore. Now with the building of deep water offshore sewage outfalls, that number is more like 1%. Third, and critically, we need to apply the same kinds of principles for building in the water that we apply to building on land. We have profoundly changed the physical structure of urban marine waterways. We need to be marine eco-engineers. We need to build in a way that facilitates the development of more natural communities and the ecosystem services that they provide in those waterways. And despite their novel and artificial nature, the habitats introduced by urban development and infrastructure can still support diverse ecosystems. So the principles underlying marine eco-engineering reflect the structure of natural habitats. We need to build surfaces that are more complex and more heterogeneous, not smooth and flat, so that we provide the nooks and crannies necessary for different organisms. We need to build at the macro scale different kinds of habitats, hard surfaces, sediments, horizontal surfaces, as well as vertical piers, seawalls, and jetties. And we need to use materials that facilitate colonization by those organisms, rather than things like standard acidic concrete. And wherever possible, we need to seed those built surfaces with habitat-forming organisms, the kelp, the oysters, the corals, that provide the biological habitat structure critical for developing diverse and functioning communities. And we also need to build in a way that reflects the fact that the ocean environment really is changing rapidly due to global climate change. These approaches are now being adopted for the built marine environment, in some instances at massive scales, in cities from New York to Seattle to Singapore. Fourth, we need to adopt the new wave of urban coastal management that explicitly acknowledges the diversity of uses and the diversity of values that our urban waterways represent. These are wicked problems. That is, they're complex, they're shifting, and they have no single optimal solution. Wicked problems highlight the need to integrate diverse disciplines. We need social sciences, economics, engineering, biophysical and ecological sciences. It is now naive to consider that we only need to know about natural ecology or just the economic return from those waterways in isolation from each other. So the need to manage and sustain our urban marine waterways is a global issue and it's shared by cities across the world. I'm pleased to say that some of the solutions are now also being taken up globally. For example, we have recently initiated a new program, the World Harbor Project, a global partnership of coastal cities with the vision to help build resilient and productive global ports and harbors through innovation and increased understanding of shared values and threats. This collaborative project includes some of the truly iconic coastal cities in the world, from Sydney to Shanghai to Rio de Janeiro to New York. And it reflects the fact that we need to recognize the beauty and the value of our urban marine spaces. It's where most of us will experience the ocean in our lifetimes. Like Pacific atolls, they can be beautiful and diverse. We need to acknowledge that urban waterways are vital and valuable, and that much of the value that we derive from cities overall depends on us sustaining those assets. Mm -hmm.